So thank you so much to Digilin for sending us one of these. It's a nifty piece of kit. I'm very much looking forward to trying to get my head around it. And if I can make something of it, we'll definitely do a video follow up to this. Enjoy the interview with Guy and Arthur from Digilin. Hello, Arthur from Digilin. Welcome to the famous IP Exchange Studios for your own very own IP experience with me. I've got your lovely box here. Yeah. And that lovely box, I've got this lovely board. Mm -hmm. And it says on there, Arctic 7, Nexus A7. Tell me what the Nexus A7 does, Arthur. So it's really fundamentally like a uh, training board for academic students who are learning about digital design. So like the big ship at the center there is an FPGA, uh, Xilinx part. Yeah, you can see um, that. Yep. So those things are really good for just being able to implement pretty much whatever kind of digital logic hardware you want uh, in there. So the Nexus has like a whole bunch of extra peripherals that are kind of seated around that chip that you can then go in, tinker, design your own hardware to control, uh, all of that kind of thing. So, okay. so if, building if, your own. No, go on. If you're going like to building, building your own. Build, building your own Europe controller is like one of the classic kind of first projects you'd see as well. Say that again, one of your own. Uh, you work. So oh, you yeah, are. Right. Okay, yeah. fine. So okay. Interface. So, so would is is this an ideal interface for somebody who hasn't been able to uh, or hasn't had the experience to work with an FPJ before? Yep. Yeah. So it's both this and another one of our products, the Basis Three, are really targeted at like those first time users. Um, right. And like because of like that set of peripherals, like it's really designed to have like a better learning curve than a lot of other FPJ products. Okay. Like, oh, so, so if you if we have a community, what what we're after with IP Exchange um, mm -hmm. is we're looking for um, differentiated technology, things that give people um, uh, an idea of how to do things differently. So, yep. if I'm thinking about if I'm thinking about using uh, an FPJ and I haven't used one before, tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about the peripherals that you'd find on this board. Yeah, so um, you in this particular case, like you've got uh, it's it, because it's kind of a trainer board, you have um, like a bunch of different kinds of interfaces and it's not necessarily like peripherals that you'd use to talk to a bunch of different applications. So like you do have like spy, spy, ITC, UART kind of interfaces. There's DDR memory on there uh, for relatively complicated projects, um, VGA. So you can like display stuff over a monitor, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, where was I going with that? Um, yeah, so like you really do, it's it's you get that like kind of core of like really flexible fabric and you can like, again, put whatever you want there and start playing around with an FPGA and then start testing out like all those different interfaces to start designing your own components for your own application. Uh, yeah. So like if you do want something to talk over ITC later, you could maybe prototype it on the board talk to the ITC interface on the board, talk to something that's connected out to the outside world, uh, like a PMOD interface, uh, yeah. and then um, go from there. Yeah, so you're you're directing this mainly at students who for the yeah. first time are looking to using FPGAs, that's absolutely fine. What, what sort of things would a student have learned from? So, so if they're looking to, mm -hmm. to migrate to an FPGA, Obviously, this isn't a starter kit for somebody working in design electronics. Sure. You know, their first day at university, they go, right, go play yeah. that. That, 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 that yeah. isn't what's going on here. So, so what's the what, what's the progression route to get to this point? What would you have been doing before you then made the decision to go, I, it's yeah. now term, time for me to learn about FPGAs? Yeah, so I mean, I studied this stuff in school and a lot of the thing there was um, like I go into computer engineering, I start learning about uh, coding. So like Python, C, so you start implementing stuff on microcontrollers. So you're like writing C that's running at a really low level and then you're writing assembly to kind of run underneath that. And then what you, as you continue to kind of dig further and further down into that stack, eventually you hit like uh, I need to design the circuits that implement a processor. And like that's the type of course where you'd really be looking at picking up on these boards. So right. that you could then, like, as part of practically part of the course, you can actually implement a processor on all these boards. Right. So now, obviously, digital are in the business of making money <laughs> uh, when there's nothing wrong with that. But you've made this for students. So what's yep. the commercial benefit? Just so that we, you know, we're f fully understanding. What's the commercial benefit to you creating this board to help students and people who haven't used FBJs in the past? 
what's your what's the commercial benefit for you making this board i mean you know some good stuff on here yep. this isn't cheap what's the commercial benefit to you for doing that um so i mean labs can buy it but we did there is also a model of um like new students coming through every year so like there is a little bit of a recurring stream there um right. and like digilent was it was founded by a couple of professors so we are really like we are aware of the cost for students to be buying stuff on their own as well. But. OK, all right. So so so, you know, digital is all because I see that you're a member of, uh, of the National Instruments family. Yep. So so would it be fair enough to say that digital is a sort of way that National Instruments um, uh, help students get into digital electronics so that when they uh, when they become fully uh, in their career, they then understand how National Instruments is going to help them build better yep. product, products and be more loyal to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Wrong with yeah. that. I'm not saying it's some Machiavellian plan. I'm just saying that's yeah. one of the reasons why why this exists. Yep, for sure. And that's also part of um, partnering with Xilinx for these boards as well, is uh, so that like students coming out of the curriculum, um, coming out of school are familiar with uh, Bovado and like the tooling that they're actually going to be using in industry. Right. Uh, right. So, and yeah, we also do a line of like test and measurement products, uh, oscilloscopes, signal generators, that kind of thing. And um, yeah. that kind of ties in more with the NI side of things. Yeah, yeah. And I, again, that's a natural com complementary thing between yeah. them, giving them the help, understanding the digital environment yeah. and then help them to, to actually measure it. Okay, good. Now, if you, if, 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 if you didn't have your board mm -hmm. and you wanted to get into digital electronics, you wanted to understand how FPGAs work, if you didn't exist and this mm -hmm. didn't exist, what would be their what will be their alternative? Just interesting to find out. Um, interestingly, so there's um, both free and like within the Xilinx tool chain uh, simulators are really the best bet. So uh, you can, um, without having physical hardware, still go in and make all the same designs, simulate them, see how they're going to work in just like a logic analyzer kind of view. Um, but you won't necessarily get the experience of like practically plugging stuff in and seeing an LED blink. Um, yeah, yeah. The, mm -hmm. There are actually like a fair number of like video games at this point around as well that like act as simulators like that, uh, that like are really, really good for learning design. <laughs> the, world, the world's gone completely insane, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you're trying to reach students, what's a better way to get them to understand an FPJ work? Yep. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> In the gaming environment, okay, good. Yep. All right. So, so okay. So, if 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 you're a student, you want to understand how an FPGA works, how you get it to do something, how you point mm -hmm. it in a direction, turn something on, turns up, turn something off, get an input, put an output. Uh, yep. This is an ideal starting point, yep. uh, and it would make sense to to. And and do they buy this from you? Yeah. Yeah. And how much so. Uh, I think the Nexus is somewhere in the ballpark of four hundred dollars. Right, right. So it's around the same point as a textbook. We do have a lower cost op offering of the Basis Three, which is um, it's not a, it has like a similar kind of feature set in terms of like just the raw I/O, but it removes DDR and a couple of the more advanced features that people might want to upgrade onto later down the line. Right, right. Okay, okay. Well, from everything you've just told me, um, it sounds to me like this is an ideal starter pack for. A student looking to do FPJs, but also professional design engineers working environments where they need to understand how FPJs interact with their systems, because you give mm -hmm. so many different options than just a simulation um, environment. Right. So, okay, good. Well, we started this conversation off with me having absolutely no idea of what you did, uh, even though I'd watched the video on IP Exchange about four times from the very <laughs> Still didn't understand. Still, still, still sure. didn't understand what you did. Yeah. <laughs> but now I do. So that's been an excellent in introduction. Been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for being on uh, IP Exchanges, IP Experience. And uh, Love being here. do you intend to upgrade this at any point? Do you do you think you can see this um, coming out with new varieties in the future? Uh, there aren't any plans on the table right now, but yeah, sometime down the line. Okay, because we would love, obviously, what, having having introduced our community to it once. If you upgrade yeah. it. We'd obviously yep. like to do a follow-up to show how you'd uh, upgraded it and made it even better. For sure.